So now it is 1020. Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, 1030 is the most segregated time in America. Then you combine that with the fact that church can be scary. Church can be painful experience. Church can be unwelcoming. Church can be judgmental. Church can be lonely. Church can be a place where somebody who is nervous in the first place comes and because of a negative experience, they never return again. Mm. Mm. Right. Church can be a hard place for us as people. And for years, I wonder why does it have to be that way? Why is it that uh, people come to church looking for a genuine, authentic experience with Jesus Christ, but what they actually experience is it leaves a sour, poor, bitter taste in their mouth. Right. I wondered that. Maybe because sometimes we get so wrapped up in doing church stuff that we forget what church is called to be. Amen. Maybe sometimes we get so wrapped up with the people who regularly attend that look like me, act like me, talk like me, and walk like me. When somebody new shows up, I'm too preoccupied with my group to really even care. And it happens all across the United States. And people leave scarred, wounded, and hurting, many times never to return. Man. And I often wonder why. Whatever the reason is, most people at this time of day would rather stay home, get ready for Sunday football, then take a chance and come and experience some kind of rejection. All right. So they stay home. About three years and four months ago, we were having Bible study at a house. And this very topic came up. Why is it that Sunday morning is so segregated? Why is it that the time that people should be together, feel united, experience a connection, experience love. Why is it that that hour there's such a divide in the church? The one place we should be able to go and be accepted. The one place where we should be able to go and experience love. It, 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 it's almost what they call an oxymoron. Something that shouldn't happen. All right. Yeah. But it does. And so we're having this, this Bible study and talking about how um, this time of, of day on Sunday is, uh, you can almost see a dividing line in our country. And, and, and what, what, what bothered me uh, all my years growing up in church, dad is a pastor, it, it bothered me that people could go, okay, prime example, preseason, turn on any preseason game and you'll see every race Creed and color. Gather together, man, they hoop line, and boy, you let the thunder get down in the chest and pick, man, we get up in there and we'll raise the roof. And it doesn't matter what the person sitting next to you looks like. All right. Why? Because we're all excited about Kevin Durant when he do what he do. Yes, Falling down, out of bounds, last second shot, fade away, in your face. Game over time. Yep. You got gotcha. you. Yep. You know how they do it. And everybody's all in the uproar. We, we all, well, yeah, high five and everything. But then, Sunday, there is this great divide. It's not supposed to be that way in church. And so we're having this Bible study. We're having these conversations. And all of these issues and ideas are coming up. And finally, one of the brothers looks at another brother and said, we got to do this. Do what? Man, we have to 
take this message to the world because there are so many people who have been hurt and are hurt by God's church. Right. Amen. And so three years later, oh, this is the start of the third year. Here we sit, Soul Church. And our passion is to let the world know that it does not matter what the outside looks like. It doesn't matter where you come from, where you've been, what you've been through, what kind of stain it left on you. All right. The only thing that matters is that we point you to the one person, the one thing that can fix it, and that's Jesus Christ. Yes. All right. All right. And so I am more excited now than I've ever been in my life. Because you know how every time, sometimes, you know, you see a glimpse of what could be if you ever had a vision. You see a God gives you a taste of how it really could be. And boy, it happened to him. Why I got so excited? I said, because, listen, our job as the body of Christ, as the church, is to lift up Jesus. Because he is the one that can fix whatever the issue is. That's right. And so our passion is to take that message and share it with the world that Jesus can fix it. So the scripture that we're going to dig into today is in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 13 and 14. And I'm going to read from uh, the New International Readers Version. This is the NRV said. Thank you, Jeff. I couldn't remember that. And it says at one time you were far away from God, but now you belong to Christ Jesus, he spilled his blood for you. That has brought you near to God. Christ himself is our peace. He has made Jews and non-Jews into one group of people. He destroyed the hatred that was like a wall between us. So Paul in Ephesians here, he's actually uh, explaining to the church at Ephesus uh, what Jesus did. He's explaining what he accomplished on the cross. He's letting the believers know that there are no longer anything stopping us from being one united body of Christ. And so he's explaining to them. Then he gets to this verse, and I love it because, listen, I actually, I actually read this verse, man, probably in 1995, 96, when God really put this vision in our hearts. And so I love it because if we dig into it, it says that the very first thing, at one time you were far off from God. Mm -hmm. He was actually talking to the Gentiles. Now, I understand in biblical text, if you were not a Jew, you were a Gentile. That was it. Everybody that wasn't a Jew was a Gentile. It didn't matter what you looked like, your race, your creed, your color. Either you were a Jew or a Gentile, everything else. And so he's telling them that, that at one time the Jewish, the, 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 the Gentiles were far off. In other words, we were not in a covenant relationship with, the, with, with Jesus or with the Lord, the Heavenly Father. We were distant. We were separated. But Paul explained what Jesus did. If you keep reading, he said we were way away from him. Right. We had no relationship with God the Father, but Paul is telling that Jesus fixed it. A long ways off. Consider it, if, okay, we can picture it like this. If we're in Oklahoma and there's some people out there in California, we really don't even worry about the people in California because we can't see them, we can't touch them, we can't smell them. So they're really out of our mind. That's how the Jews thought about the Gentiles. Right. And that's how we were from God, far away from them. Why? Because we're not his covenant people. But they said that, but now, I always like them buts but in the sentences, but now you belong to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he spilled his blood for you. Amen. So Paul is explaining what happened on the cross. See, it was much more than just a payment for our sins, which was very important because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have any fellowship anyway. So that's the most important thing that Jesus did was cleanse us of our sins and then put us in the right relationship so we can be bought near. He said he shed his blood and he paid for my sins. He covered it. And, and the thing about sins and those of us who believe Jesus in Jesus is that we, 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 get it, we get it confused. We get it twisted. We think that, you know, I'm messed up right now, so, oh, I got to start over again. No, Jesus paid for our sins once, 
and for all. It was a one-time payment, a one-time fix. You never have to worry about it again. He took care of it when he nailed it on the cross. Right. And then the Bible says that not only did he pay for our sins, but he bought us near to God. The Greek word for near is, is an interesting word because it means to squeeze. What, what, what he actually did was he squeezed us together with God. Let me see if I can help you explain. Come and take <laughs> this is my wife, so I can get near her. All right. can, I can I brag on her for a minute? For those of y'all who didn't know, Tammy is a legend. I'm, I'm going to do it. It's okay. It's okay. Tammy is a legend, and I'll tell you how. She's been singing quartet gospel music since she was, what, five? Six. All across the country, up and down the road. When I first met her back in 93, it was done back in 1990, wasn't it? Was, I couldn't hardly see her because they were traveling every weekend. They had this one song called, I don't want no. no. There you go, y'all. <laughs> and, so, and so I had heard about Tammy, but I didn't know her. All right. But boy, I walked into a church. <clears throat> <laughs> and she was directing the choir, and I saw, I said, I want to know her. Oh, you got that right? <laughs> and so what I did was I figured out a way to get close. All right. <laughs> to get near her. So now I don't only know about her through peanut butter and jelly. She's been my wife for 20 years. So now she knows me, and I know her. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so what, what, what Paul is actually saying is that that's what Jesus did for us on the cross. He gave us the ability not only to hear about God the Father, but actually figure out a way to get to know him so we can get close. All right. Thank you, Lord. And the word squeeze means once he squeezes you, after a while you can't tell the difference between God and me. Right. When you see Tammy, you see me. Why? Because we are one. So God, so Paul was teaching the church. Thank you, sweetie. Paul was teaching the church that what God, or what Jesus actually did on the cross was put you in a position where you have the opportunity to really know who God is. Thank you, Lord. Not just have heard about him, but know him personally. Experience him every day of your life. Experience a satisfying, deep relationship with God the Father. Right. It made all the difference in the world. I didn't just hear about her. I know her. I know my wife. So that word near, I draw nigh, is a special word. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. He fixed it so that we have a relationship with our God the Father. That means if you're fatherless, you got a father now. That means if you're friends, everything that comes in a relationship, the Heavenly Father supplies. Why? Because I know Him and He knows me. Right. <laughs> Jesus fixed it. And then the next verse says, and it gets good. I promise you it gets good. I'm not going to be much longer. Please bear with me. It gets good. Watch this. He said, Christ Himself is our peace. Right. Jesus is the person that creates harmony. Here's what happened. First of all, Christ made peace with me and God. He made it so that relationship was solid. And then, it gets good, it gets good. He said, he is our peace, not only with God the Father, but also with me and you. He said, Christ himself is our peace. He's our harmony. He took care of the relationship with the Father. Now he fixed it so the relationship with you and me and every other believer could be solid and satisfying and supply me with the spiritual strength I need to make it. He said, he's our peace. Jew, he made Jews and non-Jews into one group of people. So what Christ did on the cross when he fixed it was, he said, there is no more Jew, nor Greek, nor Gentile, nor woman, nor man, nor female. It's all one in Christ. He made us into one people. 
One group of people God made us into. If you want to tear up something, how do you do it? You divide and conquer it. That's the, that is one of the best strategies of war ever invented. Divide and conquer. The reason why it looks like Satan is winning this war, this spiritual warfare, is because so many of us have become divided Amen. because of what the outside looks like. So many of us are divided because of the worship songs that we sing. Because of the way we come to church. But Jesus says, I mean, Paul is saying that Jesus died on the cross, so that wouldn't even be an issue anymore. Why? Because he wanted to take people who were Jews, had a covenant with God, those of us who were non Jews, Gentiles, evil rascals, and make us one group, and he paid for our sins on the cross to bring us together to eliminate anything that doesn't look like him. Does that make sense? Amen. So he said, there is one people. And if you want to tear up something, render it ineffective, divide it. 1994, one of my favorite stories to tell. We in training camp, and they had just hired a, a new coach, and he was all about defense and didn't care anything about the offense. As a result, the offense felt neglected. So we were in training camp, and all we did was fight. Right. We have more talent on that team than any other team I've ever played for. But every day we were fighting. I'd come home to town and be like, we saw on the news, y'all fighting again. <laughs> we were expected to be a better football team, but because of the division, we were average again. With all the talent. The church has so much talent. The church has everything that it needs to have an impact on the world, but because we're divided, our impact is minimal. Right. Because Satan has figured out if I can keep them jokers divided. There you go. If I can keep them fighting and calling about things that really don't matter, I'm going to win. So Paul is telling the church at Ephesus, don't allow Satan to be victorious when God has called you to be a winner and to impact the world. So he made us one. Jesus fixed it so we would be one. Out of two, he made one. He destroyed the wall of hatred that was between us. Jesus put an end to the thing that was keeping us separate. Does that make sense? Jesus did what only Jesus could do. The thing that divided the Jewish and the non-Jewish people, and actually, in this time in the temple, there was actually a wall that divided the two sides. There was a wall in the temple that all non-Jewish people had to be over here, and all Jews over here, and I couldn't come over here, and you could come over there because you thought you were better than them, and they didn't think they was as good as you, so they worshipped different, did different stuff, and there was a wall right now in the middle of the temple, and they're trying to please everybody. And so what Paul is saying is that Jesus actually came and broke down that wall that separated the two. Now we can mix and mingle and do whatever we please. Why? Because we're all under the same blood of Jesus. Amen. Because he fixed it with his death on the cross. And so the wall that was there, with the death of Jesus on the cross, he fixed it. Don't have to worry about what your skin color looks like. Right. Don't have to worry about what your economic status is. Don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Because every time we do anything other than focus on what Jesus did on the cross, it gets a little cloudy. Mm -hmm. It gets a little edgy. It gets a little twisted. Because now my focus is not on what Jesus did, <clears throat> but it's on what you look like. All right. And if you don't look like me, mm. act like me, mm. and talk like me, and you can't kick it with me. <laughs> and that has been one of the things that has hindered the impact of the church worldwide. Is that we focus on the wrong stuff. But Paul says Jesus fixed it so you ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to be worried about, listen, if you want to come to church, you want to come in here, all we have to do is put some clothes on, cover yourself up, and you come on. <laughs> If you can't sing, that's all right. You ain't got to sing. 
If you can't sing and you want to sing, that's fine too. Go and sing. <laughs> it doesn't matter why, because the whole goal is to let the world see what Jesus has done for us. Right. He took the two groups, destroyed the wall of hatred. And we can see, just to the incidents in Ferguson, Missouri, what <coughs> hatred can do. Doesn't make a difference who's doing the hating, we see the effects of it. Right. Does that make sense? Doesn't make a difference who's the hater, it causes a problem. Right. Because he never created his people to look at things on the outside. Let me see if I can drive this point home. Tony and Keith, y'all are standing there, y'all come on up here. Some of us have seen this before. We're going to do it again because this is a great one. This is what happens. This is what happens. Tony, middle-aged white guy, grew up in Backwoods, Arkansas. <laughs> Talk like this right here. Sometimes he, he's great dude, great man. I love Tony. Been friends for a while, supports me, great stuff. But let's just say that Tony brings all the baggage that can come with a white man to church. Let's, let's put it a different way. Let's just say that they saw each other at the grocery store last week and Keith took Tony's parking space and vice versa and they had a verbal altercation in the parking lot. Right. So much so that we just had to get in between them to stop them from fighting. Third celebration of Soul Church, here comes Tony walking in. And then he spots Keith over in the back. Oh, man. <laughs> Anything that Jesus wanted to get to Tony, he can't hear. All right. Because all of the preconceived notions and ideas that he had about Keith are now sitting in that chair right there. Yes, sir. So God using Tony speaking to his heart is null and void. Mm -hmm. Unless the spirit does something miraculous. Why? All because he looked at Keith, who is just it's brilliant. It's Tony. Got a whole lot of things he can do. Tony, what a great dude, yeah. smart, intelligent, can know how to get stuff done. And now Keith is looking at Tony, oh, dirty so and so. Anything that God wants to do in Keith's life is now shut down. Why? Because they're bringing all that baggage to church. And that's what happens a lot of times. That's why the wall is divided. Why? Because we bring all of those preconceived notions and ideas right to church, and it, it causes a problem. All right. Mm. So Jesus said, that's the wall that I tore down. Why? Because I don't want there to be a roof in my creation. Listen, the Bible says that we are his creation, fearfully and wonderfully made. That means that everybody sitting in here is the handwork of God. Everything that God wanted you to have, you got it. If you ain't got it, you didn't need it because God didn't want you to have it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God handcrafted you like a fine archman doing his thing. So here they are. Divided because of life and circumstances. And Jesus says, I knocked it down. So what we want to do, what we want to teach people to do, is not look at what Tony done, not look at what Keith done, but have them to look at the cross and what Jesus did. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because when we look at Jesus, it's clear to see that I ain't no better than you, and you ain't no better than me. We all got some isms, I like to say. All right. We all got some issues. We all got things that we don't like. So nobody's better than anybody. But because of what Christ did on the cross, he knocked down the wall that separated the two. <laughs> And now we can all be one happy family. Yeah. Not because of what they did. Because the truth is, we're not going to make somebody mad throughout the time we leave here today. Right. But it's because of what Christ did yeah. on the cross. Yeah. All right. And don't they look so good together? Yeah. <laughs> Just cheesy. Think of how much more we can accomplish when we recognize 
that Jesus fixed it. Think of how much more of an impact we could have on it, on Oklahoma City, on our state, if we realize that Jesus fixed it. Think of how much bigger of an impact we can have when we realize that there is no wall separating us. All we need to do is unite and let God do what he do, work in us so he can work through us and we can impact the world for the All kingdom right. of God. Amen. 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 Thank y'all. Amen. <laughs> so nice. Amen. Wherever you are in life, Whatever you're going through, Jesus fixed it. If you are, like we talked about in the beginning, and you're far off, you don't have a relationship, that's, that's Jesus calling. And you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're far off. You have never, listen, you have never said, Lord, I need you now. I realize that I need a savior. I realize that I am a wretch undone. If you've never surrendered your life to Christ, you've never believed, you've never confessed with your mouth, now is the time. Oh, what a, what a wonder, what, I can't think of a better day for you to give your life to Christ and on the church's birth. Amen. Amen. If you've never experienced God's life-changing love, he wants to do it in you. If, if by chance you fall out of fellowship and you become callous and you become hard and you realize there are some things in you that don't need to be there anymore, Jesus can fix that too. Yes. He is able to take care of whatever your needs may be. Because when he died on the cross and shed his blood, the scripture teaches that he fixed it. So, so our passion at Soul Church is to take that message to the world. And we thank you so much for joining us today. We pray that you come back because there's some more good series of sermons that we're going to teach on this subject in the following weeks. But again, thank you so much for coming. Let's bow and let's pray. Father, in